Want to learn about stocks, cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and the metaverse? Join richtv.io. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm your host, Rich, and we have a Rich TV Live with our very special guest, John Lai, the CEO of Pet Vivo, symbol PETV on the NASDAQ. How are you doing today, John? Very good, Rich. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Very excited to have you on the show. First time guest on the show. Now, John, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with Pet Vivo? Sure. So uh, since 1991, I've been investing in companies personally with friends. And we usually try to identify a company that has unique technology uh, where a company with more money can't just overrun. So I'm never a me too. Sometimes it works out extremely well. Sometimes I'm so early that technology doesn't support it until five years later. So, so but over the years, I'm way ahead versus behind. So that, that's the good thing. So with Pet Vivo, how I got involved was the law firm, which is a very large law firm out of Minneapolis, did all the patent work and came up to me and said, hey, John, you know, uh, we got a company that's funded by NIH and DOD, and all they've been doing for 12 or 13 years is R&D research in human products and look at the patent portfolio and so on. So I came in and I said, hey, very interesting technology, great patents, great human clinicals. So this is unique from the standpoint that they actually tested on humans before we started injecting pets with the product. So he just got to love us. We did humans first. And we have uh, five products in the pipeline in the veterinary space. So that is a really deep product pipeline. We have about 12 products on the human side, which we won't go to until after we properly launch this. Wow, congratulations so, on yeah, everything you. that you guys are working on. It seems like you guys are doing some revolutionary, uh, revolutionary medicine. And I know that with pets, people love their pets, especially their dogs. So what you're doing is phenomenal. Now, you just presented at the 15th annual LD main event on Wednesday, October 26th. Can you tell us how the presentation went and what is the impact of this event for the company? So we actually have two conferences going on at the same time. I sent John Dolan out to New York and I went to the West Coast in Los Angeles. And uh, both of our schedules were totally packed on the one-on-one -on -one meetings, which is very good. Wow. And uh, the very good uh, uh, money, bar money managers, fund managers, that really fit into our space. So there was very good enthusiasm because the uniqueness of our company over other ones, if you look at, we took the time to build a very strong foundation, put all the pieces in place. We started off dealing with minimizing the FDA risk. The next thing we did was build a production facility that can do large volumes and also have the human certifications as a medical device manufacturing. So we have ISO 578, which are very high standards. Next thing we did there was bring in Josh Wilhelm. He has a history of doing large scale production of our products, which is really a syringe with biomaterials that gets injected. So he was at Medtronic, Schultz Diabetes, and he pulled a team that has proven they can produce millions and millions of syringes. So now we're in a situation where we can scale, and as we scale and increase production, gross profit margins go north of 70%. So wow. I don't have any question on the ability to scale it. So the next piece I needed was marketing. We brought in Russ Sickle. He has about 40 years experience in senior marketing positions with Zoetis and Berger Ingelheim, the number one and two player in the world in the veterinary space. Then the next step was national sales group. Mark Middleton, he's got over 40 years in running veterinary companies where he's taken the hundreds of millions in sales, Animal Health International, he was president of that, managed over 250 sales reps. So then if you look at the news releases we've had, we've been adding regional sales managers that have a minimum of 25 years experience coming out of Merck Animal Health, Covetris, Zoetis, Paula was our last one, she managed a pretty aggressive division that did really good revenues and a couple hundred people. So everybody kept saying, why are you bringing them those caliber of people? We just don't see them calling on veterinary doctors in the office. 
well, they haven't done that for a lot of years. They just manage your reps. We were betting on the basis we would secure MWI, which is a wholly owned subsidiary of Amerisource Bergen. MWI is the number one player in the world in veterinary product sales. Just in the United States, they do $5 billion a year. We entered into an exclusive distribution agreement where they have to hit certain minimums to maintain that exclusivity over three years. So That's they're our customers. So they're buying the product and putting it into multiple distribution centers in the United States. That's all fine and dandy, but you got to look at the sell through. And I'm very happy with the sell through because we started shipping in October and we've had at least one reorder, if not two reorders, for multiple distribution centers. So so that's going extremely well. I think that's great. And that leads me to my next question. With the current market conditions, investors are looking for fundamental growth and wanting to look for solid revenue growth. What has Pet Vivo been doing during these tough market conditions to give confidence to investors that the company is moving in the right direction? So we've been focused on building this strong foundation. You'll see micro cap companies never have all these pieces in place. Uh, without having a very high valuation. We're at a 25 million valuation, 10.1 million shares out, 5.4 in the float, debt of five, about 500,000, and cash on hand about 4.4 million. So we're in a pretty good shape uh, as we're rolling this out. Uh, we're gonna have to hire another five regional. So we're really driving the sales through education because we have all these trade shows and that's where the product really is launched properly. We started selling December of 2021 at the American Association of Equine Practitioners. At that event, we actually had three US Olympic vets coming in talking about our product and what success they have. We just got commitments from several of them to be in our booths again for this year's show in San Antonio coming mid-November. So we're very excited about that. And also Dr. Tracy Turner, you'll see him on our website where he goes 16 parts about why you spring for your horses. He's been, I think, to the last eight US Olympics. He's the surgeon for the Pan Am Games, also the International Equestrian Association in Barcelona, Spain. And he was also chief surgeon for the University of Minnesota Veterinary School for Lord Bama. So he's got a great reputation out there. And then president-elect now of the American Association of Equine Practitioners. He takes charge uh, in November. So we're pretty excited about that for him because that's a pretty big honor. It's a four-year term, just like the U.S. presidency is a four-year term. And with him being uh, a big believer in our product and talking about it. Also, you know, given our product is covered by pet insurance, we feel we have a, that's a major tailwind. Only 4% of the population have pet insurance. Wow. But it's also growing at 25% a year for the last five years. And with companies like True Panion and so on, private labeling now for Chewy. So when you buy your insurance through Chewy, it's really True Panion. And then you got, you know, um, nationwide, you got State Farm. You can get a rider in your homeowner's policy through a pet now. That's incredible. And John, what would you say are the top three milestones that Pet Vivo has hit for 2022 that you have announced in press releases? So the biggest one, obviously, is the exclusive distribution agreement with MWI. That's pretty much two years ahead of schedule. And then hiring of these high-level salespeople coming over because to leave the number one company in the world in veterinary product sales, when you've been for 27 years, speaks volume about how they feel about the potential of our product. Uh, and we didn't just hire one, we hired five, and we got five more that we'll be bringing on shortly. Also, we have a small animal study because all of our research we've done on the human side, the FDA didn't require us doing anything in the animal side, but when you get into these big corporate owned like Mars for VCA, they have attorneys that just check boxes. You don't have an animal study. I said, well, our human studies, 145 humans is a lot more in intensive. And they go, well, you gotta check that box before you can start selling the product. So one of our studies will be completed at the end of October here, which is days. And it takes about five months to get it published because it gets reviewed and so on. But the good thing is 
we're very confident the results are good because we have injected you know thousand over a thousand dogs and horses and so on and you know white siberian tigers and billy goats at the zoo it's pretty amazing we just wow. recently found out we injected a dolphin um, oh, wow. Kennedy and a parrot Apparently, parrots, well, not parrots, cockatoos, they last, they live like 100 years. So you have one bad yes. leg, it makes sense to inject them. So, so those are our three big accomplishments. That sounds phenomenal. Now, can you tell us, you just told us three milestones that have been announced in press releases. Can you tell us what are three up and coming milestones that Pet Vivo has planned that investors can look forward to in the future? So I think over the next nine months, we have about six studies that will be completed. And the biggest one being wow. uh, Dr. Felix Dewar is world-renowned uh, professor at uh, Colorado State University. There, he's very well known for small animal pain management. This study would have been done a long time ago, but COVID shut the campus down for nine months. And you know we had to re basically restart the study, but the good thing is we got to see what it could do in the dogs, even though we can't officially publish because the doctor didn't get to see the dogs for nine months. But we saw the results, so they were very good, and we expect the same kind of results to occur. So that one won't come out until December of 2023, but we have multiple other ones. And then we have the feline cat study starting in November, and that's the six month study. Keep in mind, these are all for market. That's why they're so quick. They're not for the FDA. The FDA has already said you're good. So this all helps support the salespeople at MWI to get the product into the small animal vets. And then if you look, our agreement isn't just for spring with osteocushion, it's for all veterinary products. We have urinary incontinence where uh, we did this for NIH, we, where we injected the sphincter muscle in the pigs, all four quadrants, and basically fixed the urinary stress urinary incontinence in pigs. It worked the same way for animals, and then eventually we will roll it into humans probably in a year. We'll start filing with the FDA for humans. So, John, is there anything else you would want investors to know about Pet Vivo today? I think if you compare us, our management team, how we have positioned the company with the foundation and how we can scale, that the risk reward really makes tremendous sense. And so, so it's all about in the market risk reward and what the likelihood is that you're gonna execute. And we have some of the best salespeople and marketing people in the world. And in terms of a couple more people that I should have mentioned, one is Randy Meyer. He's our chief operating officer. He was the chief executive officer of Taxol Medical. That thing went from like 10 million to 2 billion in market cap. Wow. Uh, paper sandwich of Republic. My CFO also came from Taxol and uh, he beat the 11 straight quarters of analyst projections. So we got people like that. And then our board members, uh, Leslie Coolidge, she was managed, she was a senior partner at KPMG that signed off on SEC audits. And she's also on the board of the that accounting practice thing that tells what auditors and accountants have to apply by. So she's our audit chair. And then Rob Constantino is um, joined our board recently. He was president of Mitsubishi Credit North America, CFO of Wachovia Bank, and CFO of Volvo. So really high profile. And then Robert Regarius was um, managing partner with McKinsey Group Asia. And he was also president of AT&T Information Systems. So his story was, yeah, we discovered the cloud in 91. I said, Robert, it really doesn't matter. Nobody could get to the cloud back in 91. He started laughing. That's very true. <laughs> and John, what is the best way for investors to get in touch with the company if they have any questions about Pet Vivo? Go to our website, www.petvivo.com, P-E-T-V-I-V-O. That's great. Well, we're really excited to see how everything is going to transpire. We're going to be watching very carefully. Now, I must remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything we talk about or discuss. In saying that, and we know that people love their animals and they love their pets and they love their dogs. So I think everyone needs to put PETV 
Pet Vivo on your radar, on your watch list right now today. They are listed on the NASDAQ. And thank you for joining us today, the CEO of Pet Vivo, John Lai. Thank you for joining us today, John. Thank you. Thank you for watching, everybody. This is Rich from Rich TV Live saying have a nice day. We'll see you soon. Thank you.